Good morning. I'm Steve Gustitis, and this is Walkabout. In this video, we'll talk about and answer two different questions. Number one, what are the big three parts of your backpacking kit that contribute to most of the weight in the backpack? And number two, should you consider going ultralight with the big three in order to reduce the weight of that pack out on the trail? The answer to those two questions is coming up right after this. The first item in the big three is your sleeping system, in particular your sleeping bag. Most people nowadays are using uh, mummy sleeping bags uh, with goose down as insulation. First, goose down is a lot uh, lighter than uh, synthetic material, and if you're using down, uh, that's pretty much half the battle when reducing the weight of that uh, aspect of the big three. The next step in reducing the weight of your sleep system is to move from a, a mummy sleeping bag to a quilt. The mummy bag is uh, kind of like a cocoon uh, compared to a quilt which is more of a blanket. And so what they do is they reduce the mass of the mummy sleeping bag by basically cutting a part out of the bag, which reduces the mass, reduces the weight, and lightens up that part of your kit. The second item in the big three is your tent. When you purchase a tent off the rack, it's typically manufactured with a material called sill nylon. And the way that uh, the tent uh, has support and structure is by using shock corded aluminum or car uh, carbon fiber poles that fit into sleeves in the tent to give it that structure and support. Now in order to lighten uh, the weight of your tent, uh, they're moving to or have moved to a new fabric called Dyneema Composite. Dyneema Composite is waterproof, it's lighter than sil nylon, it's a very, very strong and durable uh, fabric used to make these tents. The second way that the manufacturers have designed these tents is to eliminate the need for those aluminum or uh, carbon fiber uh, shock corded uh, poles that are used to give the tent structure and support. So they moved away from a bag of poles that you would have to carry with one of those traditional uh, freestanding tents and they have now designed the tents that, uh, that use your trekking poles uh, for support and structure. So by using trekking poles they reduce the total weight of the sleep system, or I should say the tent uh, system, because you're using a piece of equipment that you've already brought with you and that you, that you use every day out on the trail. The next part and final part of the big three is your backpack itself. Uh, backpacks off the shelf are typically made of nylon, uh, ripstop nylon, polyester, or a combination of those, of those materials, plus the pack is fitted with a comfortable, uh, well-padded hip belt that helps you support the load uh, that you're carrying. With ultra-light backpacks, they move away from the nylon and polyester material and they go to that Dyneema composite. They also have slimmed down uh, the hip belt. They've made them more minimalistic, therefore lighter. They might not be as comfortable as the uh, hip belt that you might find on a off-the-rack uh, um, backpack. But again, they uh, use that combination of new material and a slimmed down, minimalistic uh, hip belt to reduce the weight of the pack itself. Are there other ways to reduce the weight of your pack using equipment that you already have and that you already use out on the trail? So for years, I would carry an extra pair of wool socks in my backpack. Now, when I got back to the car during my trips, I realized that I never used the second pair of socks. So I decided just to leave that second pair and use only one pair of socks during the whole trip. Another example is I always brought a second pair of underwear. And again, even after a week long trip, I realized that I was wearing the same pair of underwear the whole trip and I could have eliminated uh, that extra weight and extra volume in my kit that I took on the trip. Down in the comments, why don't you tell me um, pieces of equipment that you've always brought on your backpacking trips, but have never used on your backpacking trips. 
So next time that you go out into the field, you might consider leaving those at home to save some weight and volume in your backpack. The next example is food. I always found that uh, when I got back from my trip that I was always carrying more food than I actually consumed uh, during my hike. So I started to more carefully calculate how much food I was going to bring so I could minimize the amount of food that was not consumed during my trip. The next way uh, to eliminate extra weight in your pack with the gear that you already have is to consider bringing gear that you can use for multiple purposes when you're out on the trail. Let's take your puffy jacket for example. Everybody brings a, pu a puffy jacket um, when they're out hiking at camp uh, after uh, you're done uh, generating that heat all day walking up and down mountains. Uh, you use your puffy jacket uh, to uh, keep warm in camp and comfortable. Now consider bringing a lighter weight sleeping bag, all right? Less volume, uh, less weight, and use your puffy jacket, wear it to bed at night, to supplement uh, the insulation uh, that you have in that lighter weight sleeping bag. So it's easy to see how you can reduce your pack load weight by using equipment that you already have at home without investing in expensive ultralight gear. So tell me what you think in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you next time here at Walkabout.